He's getting older. You gotta be beeping me! Oh, hit the full button! But not wiser. Come with me if you wanna live! This is the Lefty Show. Welcome, everybody, to The Lefty Show. I am your host, Lefty. Glad to be here with all of you today. Monday. Happy Monday, everybody out there on the 29th of September in the year of our Spaghetti Monster 2014 for episode number 95, 95 of The Lefty Show. I thank you all for joining me. Hope to put on a great show for you today. Thank you to everybody that's been watching, liking, favoriting, and subscribing on YouTube. YouTube.com slash LeftyOX is where you can go to find the show in its YouTube formation. Thank you to everybody that's been following me on Twitter. You can follow me there at Lefty643 or just Twitter.com slash Lefty643. Thank you to everybody that has been uh, sharing the show, helping the show grow. You can do your part by uh, downloading it on your PC, mobile device, or tablet, wherever you get your podcasts uh, Android, iOS, it doesn't matter. Just search The Lefty Show wherever you get your podcasts and be sure to download it there. Enjoy all the episodes uh, at your leisure. And uh, playing with, um, let's see, there's one more proper that I usually get to, huh? Isn't there? There usually is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you to everybody that's been donating. I'm raising.com forward slash 643 productions, helping the show. Stay afloat with studio costs and the like. That's imraising.com forward slash 643 productions. I thank you all for doing that. Uh, playing with some new stuff. I said in the last show I should. I, I, I want to play with boosting my uh, the output of the tablet that I use as a de facto. Um, yeah, as I use that I use as a de facto soundboard. And I am. The thing is, I just don't want to plug it into. Um, my preamp, it's just going directly into the compressor. So the signal to noise ratio is going to be a bit low. You want signal to noise to be high, usually a little bit high. If, if it's way too high, you get a weird sound, but you want to be a, a, as high as you can reasonably go on signal to noise ratio, as I understand it. Uh, the fact of the matter is you want more signal, less noise. You want to as much signal as you can less electronic noise if you can limit that if you can stop it uh then that's what you want to do because anytime you plug in anything electrical and listen to it anytime anything electrical is producing sound there's going to be noise just because uh, unless you buy the the biggest and baddest transformers you could possibly have you know, not and, and we're, we're talking like the four-way diode ones with just big ass transformers in them, because otherwise you're getting you're getting pulse DC, which is not good. You want as close to actual direct current as you can, because what's coming out of the wall is alternating current, which doesn't really work well with a lot of electrical components, as I understand. It. Again, I'm uh, the electrical stuff, the electrical side. I, I'm like, I kind of get it. I think you know, there's. You know, there's voltage and, and there's current and and resistance and uh, voltage is or current is coulombs per second and a coulomb is the number of electrons that pass by any given point in one second and I think it's like six point nine times ten to the it's some huge number of electrons pass through uh it, it is defined as a coulomb that's you know that's a Coulomb is 600 whatever billion trillion electrons passing by a point in one second. Then you get Coulombs per second. So it's it's like six point whatever trillion gazillion fulfillion times whatever. And that's current. Resistance resists the current flow. Uh, and voltage is joules per Coulomb, the pot which is it's the potential work done, the potential energy or the potential to do work done. And it's, oh, my God, when you start talking about it and uh uh is that it, whenever you plug in anything there's going to be you know there's going to be stuff and then and, and as an audio guy when you're doing audio work you want to limit you want to limit the amount of noise coming through 
because, but not again, not too much because then you get, you, you get kind of a weird sound because you hear a- ambient noise whenever you're just listening to things. But if you just heard signal, you go, oh, oh, that's weird. So let's see if I can turn it up. Do you hear that high piss or <laughs> that high pitched hiss? The s- that signal coming through the audio thing. So I'm boosting the the output of the uh, of the tablet, which is again the de facto um, the de facto soundboard. I don't have enough money for an instant replay too, which is the industry standard. And oh God, do I want one? But they're like two thousand dollars. So I'll have to make I'll have to make do with a tablet. Um. But so I'm just I'm just playing with different things, uh, trying to get a good mix going, because I noticed in certain like uh, I was doing some. I was doing some self review and every self review is important in whatever you're doing. Self review. Is how you get better at things. And it's also how you keep yourself. From stagnating, it's how you keep yourself from becoming a bit too comfortable. And thinking, oh, I got this. This is easy. Or becoming, uh, how do you say, stale, I guess. Yeah, and you, you, you can do it, you know, in terms of content. You can do it in terms of delivery. You can do it in terms of presentation. And I was reviewing presentation, so I was listening to my show, as conceited as that sounds. But I listen to it on different mediums. I listen to it through, you know, earbud headphones sometimes when I'm working out. I listen to it in my headphones playing through iTunes and uh, I put it on my phone and I was going somewhere in my car and I was listening to the show there and just the mix sounded off. My voice sounded all right in terms of how loud it was, but the background, let's say, uh, let's go to the islands. That sounded a little low. It sounded a little bit low in terms of the mix. Now I don't know how, how it sounds in my headphones versus how it sound how it's going to sound in the final audio mix. I'm not sure, and that's again something I got to play with. So, been doing a lot of work there and um, testing out some new things, trying out some new things in uh, in preparation. I've got uh, got some stuff cooking. Pro- hopefully, hopefully this coming weekend, going to start churning out some stuff uh, that's going to be uh, new for for my channel and uh, and hopefully for some of you. So just preparing just preparing you know always just just testing stuff out all right we'll turn you down just a little bit more there we go just let him just let it play just fade out just fade out go gently into that good night um all right so that's behind the scenes 101 <laughs> that's that's behind the lefty show how much did we burn there eight minutes all right i like it there we go that's a good start to the show when you burn eight minutes talking about nothing you got to hit those time markers, kids. You got to do it. You Sometimes you got to stretch. Stretch. Sometimes there's not a lot going on, and you just got to banter about, um, which is incredibly hard in a one-man show, <laughs> bantering with yourself. <laughs> that should be the tagline for my show, bantering with myself. No, that, you see, it's, it's a tagline for the show, the lefty show, bantering with myself since 2014. It's a T-shirt bantering with myself and it's like an autobiography title bantering with myself my career in crappy internet radio or crappy internet podcasting (laughs) i love it all right um a lot of people get mad like oh you're talking about this for way too long and it it comes from and i think it comes from ignorance of of like perhaps what i'm trying to do and and perhaps a little bit uh a little bit ignorant about creating things because imagine the common refrain is I'll I'll start here the common refrain is this has gone on for way too long this has been talked about for way too long circling back to the same point to reiterate way too many times etc and the common refrain, it, it, it culminates in, this could have been done in less time. And I say, okay, yeah, sure, of course. Of course it could have. Big stroker? Yeah, I'm, I'm aware. I could truncate many things 
say things succinctly and be contrite and just make sure not Lilu, just Corbin Dallas, Lilu. Same thing. I can, you know, cover things in an amount of time. The Pope is a dick. Next topic. The Pope shields pedophiles still. Next topic. We'll talk about that later in the show. I can do that very easily. Duh. But there's something to be said for, and, and, and to go along with that, the show could be a variable time each and every week or each and every day. Some shows would, would be 30 minutes long, not an hour. Other shows would be an hour and a half. You know, if, if I actually devoted the amount of time to what could be said most succinctly, if I actually did that, if there was no, say, well, let's keep it in terms of what we started talking about the show, audio compression. Things are compressed and then amplified so that everything's, the levels are kind of equalized, right? The, the, the low end of my voice or the high end of my voice, or when my voice gets loud, it's, it's tapered off and then squished. But the quiet, depending on the compression ratio, the quiet parts of my voice are amplified just a bit to kind of even out the mix and create create a, uh, a a more even keel in my sound. And that has the added benefit of controlling uh, volume stuff and, and all those kinds of things. And what I can what I do and what many people do it, it, with topics, there's, there's again, there's two different ways. Now you could go no compression. And whatever I have to say about a cer certain topic, it represents the, the, the quickest and fastest way it could be presented to you. I could do that. But it's, I think, better and probably better for a demo reel or, or for, for, you know, uh, radio spots. If I ever try to get an, a like an actual gig in radio, they don't care about presenting points contritely. They don't care about that. What they care about is getting to your time markers. Get to your time markers. You know what? You know you're an FM radio. You got news and traffic and weather on the on the twos, right? 802, 812, 822, 832, 842, 852, 902. That's traffic and weather. Bam, 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 bam. That's what they care about. And you gotta hit your time markers. And the show doesn't get shorter just because you have nothing to talk about. The show doesn't get shorter. Just because, you know, okay, well, we've covered this. You know, we've said basically what we think, presented the story, presented our thoughts in a nice scrumptious little morsel. Okay, next thing. There would be a ton of dead air because, oh, well, the bears suck. All right. Well, now we got to wait until, I don't know, crap, what, <laughs> the next break. So... I formatted this show to be kind of like that. Now, I don't have I don't have actual breaks in the show. I don't have, you know, you know we got to take a break at the 15 minute mark or the 25 minute mark or whatever. I don't have that yet. All I have is the beginning and end of the show. And I the way my approach is. Now, I could I could do the lefty show completely differently. My approach could be I'm just going to talk about whatever I talk about in the, vi the the show is as long as however it is, you know, whatever, you know, I'm talking about this. I'm talking about that. It, it could be 20 minutes. doesn't matter. I could do that. And I, and I know how to do it and I know that it can be done. I don't want to do the show that way. So saying, Oh, this could have been done quickly. Yes. Okay. Genius. Thank you. Thank you for that. Sterling input. You, oh, my goodness. I, nobody would have known. Holy crap, you could have just said the Pope's a dick and gone about your business. Yes, I'm aware of that. What I'm doing is, you want to call it a trial by fire, whatever, getting in the practice, getting in the mode of your time is defined, not the content. Your time is defined. Whether in the short term, as in we got to take a break in five minutes, or whether the long term, you've got a three and a half, four hour show 
with breaks in between, and you have to program for it. I'm stretching the programming to fit the time, not stretching or compressing the time to fit the programming. Those are two different approaches to putting on a show. I've chosen a, f a, a generally fixed time around there, and I will stretch programming to fit that need. Other people do it differently, okay? And you like what you like. But to tell me or to tell anybody that this is done wrong or this is done improperly is just, no, no, it's not. It's just a different approach to putting on a show. It's a different approach to covering topics. And the way I've chosen to do it gives me the added benefit of I can go through and chop stuff up. And if I put a radio demo together for, for Sirius, uh, for, for any number of the channels on Sirius, but I guess I would have to go to, directly to Sirius to that, to any number of radio stations, terrestrial radio, they don't care about programming. They don't care about presenting time content in a in a sh in short order. They don't care about you know who you are, where you are, what you want. They don't care about that. What they care about is: Are you on time? Do you can you stretch programming if need be to get you to that next break or to get you to the end of the show? That's what they care about, and that's what I'm sh that's what I'm practicing to do. I'm I guess I'm using this show as practice. Practice? Talk about practice? Same practice. I'm using the show as practice to, to get better at that. And it's just, a, on top of all that, it's just a different way to do a show. So you can be mad. Okay, I think that says more about you. A lot of people, there's a lot of crap being, you know, or there was a lot of crap flung my way. Oh, look at this, look at this. You're, you're dead, you're done, you're out, you're you know, what's that? Uh, that's life by Frank Sinatra. Over and out. You're over and out. Okay. Well, that says more about the fact that I'm no longer associated with this and people are leaving. There's a mass exodus because of that. This is something about them, not me. This says something about you. If you can't just, oh, okay, this is this this guy does a show differently. I may not like it, but that doesn't mean that the show is done objectively poorly. And I don't know, and, and also to have the, the, the clairvoyance to say, I don't know what the hell I'm talking about, but I'm still going to speak in absolute absolution and tell people, oh, this is wrong, that's wrong. No. This is how the show is done. This is how many shows are done. Just because you don't like it, which is fine, go ahead and not like it. But just because you don't like it doesn't mean it's wrong. Just because, and, it, and it's nothing that, not necessarily, although it very well could be, it's not necessarily that I'm doing things wrong. Just like, oh, there was a mass exodus from your channel. Yeah. That says something about those people, doesn't it? 12-year-old sycophants to a middle-aged man. Weird, huh? Weird. Okay. Fine. And on that note, you know, I should probably do a state of the channel, like video. Haven't put my uh, the old mug on camera in a while. It's probably for the better. It's probably for the betterment of the internet that that's uh, you know that that's done. Uh, no, 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 we don't do that anymore. Yeah, it's just, uh, 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 uh. But uh, I know I have to build an audience again. I I know that. I'm not dumb. I'm going to. That's okay. That's that's bleh, duh. And, and I've done it before, done it a few times, changing formats, rebuilding audience from this to that, to the other thing, a few different, I've been in this game for four years, three years, three or four years, right around the time, a little bit after black ops one dropped. I don't remember when that is. When, when let's look at that son of a bitch up. Call of duty, black ops, not black ops two, black ops, probably, uh, probably my favorite. It was released, come on now, it was released on November 9th, 2010. All right, so yeah, going on, going on four years now. And I've built, I've built an audience for one thing and then another and then another after that. And I'll, okay, well, now I have to do it again. All right. I don't think necessarily that says 
anything about me. All right. Uh, this is something I wanted to talk about uh, last week, and uh, and I ju- I just never got to it. There was a there was a story that a Costco customer broke something fell on and broke a Costco customer's leg. And some people thought it was me. No, it's not me. After he was being detained by an employee for not wanting to show his receipt after leaving Costco. For those of you that don't know, many big box stores, big big box warehouse stores like Sam's Club, uh, Costco, I believe Walmart does it in some areas. Walmart does it here and there. But usually the way you tell these places is that they don't give you bags. If you're buying stuff at a place that doesn't provide bags for your for the items that you purchase, you're probably in a big box slash warehouse store. And the common practice for these stores is to check your receipt after uh, upon leaving the store. They want to make sure that what you have in your cart matches what you're what you've paid for. And I've long had an issue with this because just basic contract law. It's basic stuff. My contract, the sale is completed at the register. You offered, I accepted. You put the goods out for sale, and I entered. You offered, I accepted. And then I paid. Bam, contract, done. My stuff. You have no say over my things and what I do with my things when I'm leaving the store. And and we're we're conveniently forgetting forgetting for a moment that sometimes it's part of it's part of a membership agreement. But there's there's ways around this. You and that's just it. that's it. That's my qualm with it. No. You if you can ask to see my receipt. You can say, "Hey, can I check to make sure cuz and I get it. I totally get why they do it. I totally get why Costco, Sam's Club, and all these stores do it. Because their margins are so paper thin that they can't handle loss. They can't take leakage. There's a few different industry terms for it, usually starting with L, having to do with loss, loss prevention, LP. If you're in Best Buy and you hear somebody go, oh, LP is a blah, 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 blah. They're talking about loss prevention, the guys in the yellow shirts at the front of the store. Oh, that's one. Best Buy does it. Again, their margins are so paper thin because they've now they've got to compete with with Amazon and the Amazon price match. Blah, 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 blah. Now they say, oh, you know, let me see your receipt to make sure that what you have is what you want. But again, and it's even easier with Best Buy because no, 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 checking my receipt is not part of my sale with my contract with Best Buy. Now, again, I totally get why they do it, but it's not your receipt. It's my receipt. It, they're not your things. They're mine now, and you can. Piss right off if you think that you're going to stop me and check my receipt. If you ask, hey, man, can I check that out? Because, you know, we've been losing some stuff. I might say, okay, sure. Yeah, I got nothing to do. Go ahead and check it out. But that's my charity. I'm not, I don't owe that to you. It's not my duty. My, my things are my things now. My receipt is proof positive that I can tell you to piss off, and there ain't a damn thing you can do about it. You can't say boo. Now, apparently, this guy, and, and props to him because he said, no, you're not checking my damn receipt. And again, I know it's part of the membership. Hold on. He said no. And the Costco employee restrained him. He said, no, you're not leaving. And he tried to leave. There was a scuffle. Something fell, and he broke his leg. He ended up breaking his leg after trying to free himself from the bonds, the bondage with the Costco employee. Now to the membership. Yes, it is part of the Costco membership that they reserve the right to check receipts upon leaving. And that's part of the membership that you sign up for. Okay. All right. What about guests, though? Did guests agree? Are are they bound by the membership rules? I don't think so. Regardless. My point is this. If not legally now, if I'm not... If I can't make a legal argument, at least in the case of these big box stores, that you can't check my receipt because they're mine, if not legally, then I say, all right, morally, screw you. Why are you treating me like a criminal? Why do you suspect me of doing something wrong? I'm a paying member of your club. Why am I paying 
to be subjected to cri- to searches. Why am I paying for that? Why are you treating me like a criminal? And and regardless of what the membership says, regardless of the membership and saying, oh, well, you have to submit to, to, to receipt checks, which, okay. My rule is, in a reasonable time frame, if I'm leaving and I walk up, you have, you as per my membership, have the right to say, hey, can I see your receipt? Sure, okay. And you can revoke my membership for that. That doesn't mean you can detain me for it. It just means I can no longer be a member. My membership is gone. That Okay. But my rule is, I'm not waiting in line to leave your store. That's the thing. I I don't know how many people shop at these big box stores. Now, and, I, and I've gritted my teeth the last couple times I've went. Because it's a, it's a struggle every time I do it. Because I'm still of the, you don't. You shouldn't be doing this. We shouldn't be we shouldn't be acquiescing to this and saying, "Oh yeah, go ahead. Yeah, search for myself." I've stopped, you know, they ask, "Can I see your receipt?" And they're usually old people and you I don't know if that's done strategically. I don't know if there's research that says, you know, people have a harder time being mean to old people or if they just work cheap. But um people ask, you know, "Can I see your receipt?" And I just stop and I smile and I hand the receipt because I hmm you know, all right. Okay, and I, I'm not going to say anything. I'm not going to say anything. The only thing I'll say is if they start touching my food. If you start touching my food, I'm going to say, don't touch my damn food. Stop it. Because membership or not, membership agreement or not, that those are still my things that I'm eventually going to put into my mouth. Unless I bought one of the things that isn't edible. One of the many things they sell that isn't edible. But it, even then, maybe I put the shirt in my mouth. Maybe I put the pack of cheap T-shirts and socks in my mouth. Who Screw you. They're my T-shirts, man. I want to eat this crap. Leave me alone. But I don't know how many of you have ever dealt with this. The thing I hate, the thing I loathe, the thing I think is, you know, no, 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 no. I don't care if I agreed as part of my membership to say you can search my receipt. The thing I, the thing I draw the line at is I'm not waiting in line to leave your damn store. I'm not waiting in line. There are times when it have been six, seven people deep. And when's the last time seven people in a row went to Costco or Sam's Club for just one thing? You go to Sam's Club, you better be ready to spend $200. If you're, if you're buying a month's worth of food, as many people do, when you go to Sam's Club, you better be worth, you're buying 200 bucks worth of food. It's going to be piled high, deep. You know, you go, to, go watch, go watch what, look at all this crap people buy. You go, oh, my God, I didn't know they sold that many things here. When there's seven of those people lined up and I'm number eight, I'm not waiting in damn line anymore. I don't care. And screw you, Sam's Club or Costco, for not seeing that and having, having the forethought to say, all right, listen, old people that are manning the doors. When there's seven people lined up deep, just just pass them on through because at the end of the day, these are paying members. People are paying to shop here. They are paying us for the ability to pay us more money. Don't harass them and don't make them wait 10, 15, 20 extra minutes because you have to go through line by line to make sure that the number of items sold matches the number of items in the cart. So I hope this guy, I hope this was the circumstance that this guy broke his leg on under the circumstances under which he broke his leg. And props to him. Good. Now I hope, again, we're being detained. A Costco employee dared put their hands on me. Screw you. I hope he gets a lot of money. That's 150 grand. There you go. Give me 150 grand, Costco, right now. That's what I demand. You put your damn hands on me? All I, for for what? For not showing receipt? I'm a paying member. Is my membership in dispute? Well, no. All right. So merely not showing you receipt is cause enough for you to think that I'm shoplifting? And for you to detain me? Ugh. 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 No. Bad move, Costco. I hope you lose your shirt on this. And uh I had a uh, speaking of run-ins with uh with people. Sometimes I hate people. I, uh, 
Last week, I met up with uh, I met up with my dad one night to uh, to have a beer with uh, you know get some dinner, have a beer, and the it was oh that's what it was it was the Blackhawks it was preseason exhibition hockey, and uh, I wanted to go watch the Blackhawks game. Why I want to watch preseason hockey, I don't know. So I show up, and uh, we've been there, you know, a couple pitchers deep. Food's on the way. We're just discussing the ills of the world, as we do from time to time when we, whenever we meet up for this. And in comes a family who sits down behind us at another. You know, this isn't a. This isn't really a classy of classy joints. Uh, they just, you know, there's just sports on the TVs and you go watch and these people come in and sit down behind us. Now, again, there's the, the place is sparsely filled. No, no, no real, like, Oh my God, we got to wait for a table. And my dad and I are having a discussion and at the table directly behind us sits down a family, you know, mother, father, and, uh, and like a teenage boy. And through the course of our discussion, a couple F bombs are dropped. All right. It's an, it's an F bomb. A not not n bombs, not any not any r- racial slurs of any kind, just f bombs, and that's for me. That's a that's an icebreaker. Longtime listeners of this show my know my thoughts on the word on the f bomb as an icebreaker. If you can get somebody, if somebody in some position of authority or somebody unknown to you, if you're trying to feel out somebody, and either you can drop an f bomb or you can elicit one from them. And it doesn't get awkward or contentious. If you go, ah, F this, you know, it's like, ah, that effing thing was, oh, it's all effed up. And they go, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a, you've broken the ice because, okay, now we, now we exist on a level where I can, I can curse in front of you, not at you, but I can curse in front of you and you're okay with it. And you're not going to flip out at the mere presence of curse words because you're not an idiot. You're a human, a rational thinking person, and you can go, oh, these are just words. And they're saying they're dropping the F-bomb, but not at me. They're just, they're just trying to, to express their dismay with something. Okay. Ah. Ah. It's really, it's really like the badge of rational humans. If you can do that with somebody and somebody does that around you, you go, ah, that's a rational person. I like you. Hang on to people like that. If there are people who will curse in front of you and just, and you're obviously you're okay with it. Or if you can curse, curse in front of other people and they'll join in the chorus, like, ah, this effing thing. And they go, oh, it was really effed up. And you go, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good, that's good people right there. Let me tell you kids. So an F bomb was dropped. And of course the woman is the, is the, the female is the first to say something. And the, uh, the, 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 the father stands up to go get something. I don't know, maybe another fork or something. Uh, and he gets, he like leans over the table at which my dad and I are sitting. And he's like, you and you, and he's like pointing with his finger. And he's, you know, oh, you, you're swearing in front of my kid. And you're just, I said, we said the word, we said the F word, man. What do you, what's the problem? He said, this is a family place. I said, no, it's not. What are you talking about? They serve beer here. It's, if, it's, if they serve beer here, it's not a family restaurant. If there are intoxicating liquors being served, it's not a family. You don't get to call it a family restaurant. TGI Fridays, despite what they want to say, is not a, not a family restaurant. Applebee's, not a family restaurant. Family-friendly restaurant. It's not. Because there's, there's mixed messages. We'll get you screwed up. We'll get you all liquored up. But you better not, you better be family friendly in your language or whatever you're doing. You can't be doing that. What? What? Huh? No, you, the only time you get, you know what's a family friendly restaurant? Chuck E. Cheese. That's family friendly. Because I, I don't think they serve beer or al- any kind of alcohol. You only get to McDonald's, family friendly. Burger King, Taco Bell. You only get to call your place a family friendly, family friendly, whatever. If you don't serve intoxicating liquors of any kind, you don't hear many family, family friendly liquor stores. Do you, do you hear of many of them? No. Why? Because they only exist to get you liquored up. 
if you're if you have a bar and you serve food, you don't call yourself a family friendly bar because you're getting people drunk and then selling them crappy nachos. That's what you do. Don't 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 call yourself family or don't don't try to defend the place you're eating at as family restaurant when they've got 16 taps 16 different kegs lined up of any kind of different beer you want. Uh uh-uh, no 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 no. None of those places. Not family friendly. And you know the last time I told another story like this about uh, about another time that it happened um and I didn't Though my response was funny, and though how it was handled was funny, it probably wasn't handled the best way. The best way to handle these things, the best way to handle these things is to immediately say you're sorry. Especially if you're like me and you know know, know the owner and you like the owner and you like going to the place and you don't mean to disrespect the place, you don't want to get anybody in, in trouble or have to make anybody have make any tough decisions. The best way to handle it is to immediately apologize. Say, you know what? You're right. I'm sorry. Let me buy you a drink. Or let me buy you a sundae. Let me buy you, I don't know, some fries. And and just immediately make amends. But the funny part was that this guy was so pissed off because of F-bomb, he told me to get up and go somewhere else. And I tried to explain to him, and he didn't get it. I said... Listen, man, there are plenty of other places that you could have sat down. You sat down after us. We were here. With the picture on full display, you know that there, there are people imbibing right here. We're not hiding it. Not like we're taking sips from flasks and all of a sudden we just turned belligerent. And by the way, we weren't belligerent. But you sat down next to the two guys with a pitcher of beer. What did you think was going to happen? Now now we have to move or we have to leave and go our separate ways because you sat down to two people imbibing and then didn't like what they had to say. And it gets back to this whole society that we, we shame victim shaming. We victim blame. And, I, and, and, and that's a, even then, that, that victim blaming, that phrase has such a negative connotation. If you, if you are said to victim blame, well, you're just a real piece of crap. You're just an ass bag, apparently, because, oh, how dare you think to blame the victim? And wh- while it's true, you know, like, oh, was she asking for it? Well, hold on. And, and that's, the, that's the case that a lot of people use to say, oh, wow, look at you, victim shaming. That's, that's horrible. Well, hold on a second. Hold on a sec. She was dr- dancing, grinding her, grinding her naughty bits on the guy's leg at the bar, right? And then went back to his apartment and then took her pants off and started making out with him and then unbuttoned her shirt and started getting naked and put his, you know, thing in her mouth. What is that? Wait, wait, a wait, wait, what is that? If, if that's not, if that's not, hey, I kind of put myself in a precarious position, what is it? Well, no still means no. Well, I agree, but she didn't say no. She just woke up the next morning and, oh, man, uh, I didn't like that. So now we have to look at, well, what did what did she or he or what did people do to put themselves in these positions? Yes, victim shame, victim blame. If you have to, my, my point is this. I want victims questioned. I don't want them blamed summarily. I don't want, if, if a woman shows up at a police station and says, I was raped, I don't want the police to go, bah, you were asking for it. Get out of here. No, 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 no. You invest, oh, okay, well, what happened? Tell us who, where, when, why, what were the circumstances? Is there any evidence? Let's do this. But I also want the victim to be questioned. I want victims, let's move away from rape because that's, yeah. But I want victims to be questioned. You're pissed off that something happened to you. I'm pissed off that these two guys said F around my, the F bomb around my kid. Well, okay, which is not unreasonable. It's not unreasonable for a parent to, to not want that around their child. Okay, well, what did you do, sire, to put your offspring in such a situation? And could it have been avoided? Oh, well, you're blaming the victim. Well, yeah. 
because you're a, li- you're a little bit accountable for your actions. It's the same thing with smoking bans, secondhand smoking bans. Oh my God, my children, the children, the children, the children. I shouldn't have to do this. I shouldn't have to deal with it. Well, wait a minute. What can you do to avoid secondhand smoke? Smokers aren't seeking you out. They're not following you around, blowing smoke in your face. If you're walking down a park or down a wide city street, a city sidewalk, wide-ass sidewalks, you, you see a smoker on one side, you maneuver to the other side. The smoker was there first. You can avoid it. Yes, it is on you if you do not like secondhand smoke or if you don't like offensive language or if you find certain language offensive and don't like it. Go away. Change the channel. I don't like South Park because their views upset me. Change the damn channel. I don't want to see boobies on my TV. Uh-huh. Huh? 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 Change the channel. You vict- victims get way too much credibility in our society today. You get way too much. I'm a victim. All you have to do is paint yourself as a victim, and you are completely immune from any skepticism or criticism whatsoever. Because anybody else, anybody who qu- dares to question you, dares to say, well, you know, you contributed to this. Yeah, you could have avoided the guys drinking in the corner of a sports pub. You could have avoided that. There were plenty of other places. And, huh, who would have thought guys drinking in a sports pub might use offensive language? And you could have avoided it. You didn't. And you heard it. And it was offensive. Get up and move. But we've created, and and it's been positively reinforced time and time again, victim blaming is bad. Even questioning the victim is bad, is bad, is bad, is bad, is bad. That people feel, as soon as people feel victimized, they are entitled to tell you what to do. You get your secondhand smoke away from me. You do this. You do that. You get this thing that offends me in some way away from me. Remove it from my presence. We're an entitled damn society. Entitled. Beyond, just beyond, beyond the pale. The, the amount of entitlement that we see, oh, get, oh, it offends me. It's on you to remove this offending thing away from me. Oh, okay. It doesn't seem, I, I don't know, I'm crazy. No doubt that I'm crazy. It just doesn't seem logical to me. Let's do some news. All right, we got, uh, we got a lot to talk about in the news today. Uh... <laughs> There was a, the the Oklahoma man, uh, Alton Alton Nolan, an Oklahoma food processing plant worker, who was fired, and then went on a rampage that resulted in one death, a beheading, and another woman uh, sent to the hospital with stab wounds. Uh, this was in Oklahoma. This is from CNN. And Alton Nolan, for the, this again, the story this story happened last week. I never got to cover it. Alton Nolan when uh, went on a rampage again, uh, uh, stabbed a woman, and then beheaded her, and then began stabbing another at a at a processing pe- uh, food some kind of food plant in Oklahoma. And it came out afterwards that Alton had had converted to Islam years before and had recently been trying to convert plant workers to the ways of Islam. He, he even began calling himself Jaquim Yisrael on Facebook. And a lot of people are saying, well, wait, hold on a second. We've had these ISIS beheadings. There's this, there's this new wave of invigorated Islam, uh, uh, militant Islam go, going through popular, popular culture, popular society. Everybody's talking about ISIS. Everybody's talking about what ISIS has done, you know, persecuting Christians in Iraq, beheading journalists, making threats against the United States, now talking about how the ineffectiveness of bombing runs, et cetera, et cetera, all this crap. And here we have in Oklahoma, middle America, a guy who had converted to Islam and was trying to convert workers 
going on a rampage after something he didn't like happened and beheading somebody in the exact same way that other militant Islam, followers of militant Islam or militant Islamists have murdered other people throughout the world. That Doesn't that seem like a militant Islamist? I mean, doesn't that sound like, hey, maybe Islam had something to do with this guy beheading this other person? And we've been told because, and, and I, I get to this point a lot, and I talk about it a lot, but the desire for people to not seem racist definitely impacts even the reporting of news. Sometimes people, you know, oh, don't don't say that the don't say the suspect is black. Well, why? Isn't that relevant? Well, we don't want to appear racist. So political cor- correctness is now superseding your duty as a news reporter to get the story out so people can protect themselves. Now we're being told, well, 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 now officials are downplaying Alton's Islamic side. And Popular media is saying, let's not go jump to the conclusion that this was somehow affected by Alton's Muslim religious views or Islamic religious views. Let's not go pretending that. And I said, well, wait a minute. That just seems like, that seems like another move where it's like, well, let's not talk about how he was he had taken a radical turn towards radical Islam because that might offend other islamic people in the country if we if we just say well this guy isis radical islamists and they behead people and they've been in the news a lot this guy yeah, a radicalish islamist something happened he didn't like and he goes around beheading people on a rampage stabbing beheading and then trying to stab another one another girl another woman well, it was just, they just got in his way. He was just on a rampage. It had nothing to do with his Islamic following. This is from CNN talking about uh, Alton Nolan. Uh, and they, they, they talk about, of, of course, there's the, the, the obligatory family saying, you, you know, he was, he was so kind, he was so generous, he was such a nice person, he wasn't ever violent, et cetera, et cetera. At some point, this is the article now, at some point, that no red flag's life seems to have taken a turn. In 2006, CNN affiliate Koki TV in Tulsa reported Nolan was arrested after a police, police officer saw him throw bags of crack cocaine and marijuana out of a car window as he was being pulled over for traffic violations. Now, that's nonviolent drug crap. I don't care. Out on probation in 2010, he was stopped for an expired tag, again, eh, uh, when a trooper learned he had outstanding arrest warrants, Koki reported or KOKI reported, he struggled with the trooper, then escaped only to be arrested 12 hours later, the station reported. In 2011, he was convicted on drug, resisting arrest, and escape charges and sent to prison. In online prison records related to that incident, authorities note that in addition to a Jesus Christ tattoo on his chest and praying hands on his right arm, he had the Arabic words for peace be upon you tattooed on his abdomen. The Facebook page where Nolan posted under the name Yisrael, confirmed by police to be his, features a cover photo of fighters holding a machine gun and a rocket-propelled grenade launcher. It also features numerous messages related to Islam, but offers no hint he was planning an attack or that it had anything to do with his religion. Again, that's editorialized. The law enforcement official who spoke to CNN on Monday said Nolan had watched beheading videos, but it was unclear if they were linked to ISIS. And other law enforcement, uh, t- and a- another law enforcement official told CNN on, on Monday that there was no indication of a link to terror. Let's see. While it's unclear when Nolan himself converted, his fake Facebook page abruptly changed from posts featuring song lyrics, talk about football, and other topics to to, to posts almost exclusively related to Islam in April of 2013, shortly after he was released from prison. Among the posts are screeds condemning the United States as wicked for failing to help Palestinians during the recent hostilities with Israel. His last post contemned, condemned masturbation. Well, I got nothing for you there. But here's the thing, and, and I'm not campaigning for, oh, they should have seen this guy coming, he should have been watched. No, 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 no. Everybody should, listeners should know, I don't care about what you post to Facebook. As long as it's not a specific threat, go ahead and talk about the evils of the Western world all you want. I, I, I don't care. 
I got nothing for you. But here's a guy who abruptly made an abrupt change in his religious views and his his speaking on things via social media. He went from talking about football and sports to condemning, you know, giving, giving you know, a little uh, 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 uh. And he talked about all oh, the ways of Islam and 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 you the the West is is evil for not helping is the the is the Palestinians and Islamics throughout the world and you know it sound and and again couple that with previously he was trying to convert people to Islam if it walks and talks like a duck maybe a duck right here you've got a guy posting you, you, radicalish Islam things. Just kind of, eh, you know, right on the borderline. But right there, here you got have got here you have a guy posting radical like Islamic postings, trying to convert people to Islam, and then beheading his first victim, just like the radical Islamists that have been on the news in the last couple of months. What? Do, may there be something there? Could there be anything? Could I mean? Couldn't there be something? Why do why do we have to pretend? Oh well, it, it wasn't Islam. It wasn't. It wasn't Islam. It wasn't Islam. Or, or and I'm not trying to say the guy's a terrorist or he was. He had anything to do with ISIS or or any kind of group. But maybe it was his radical Islamic views. Isn't it possible? Nobody's saying he's a terrorist. I'm not. I don't mean to bring up Islam to say that he's a terrorist. I'm talking about the radical nature of his religious views. Might that be something we want to talk about? Might that be something we want to go? We want to highlight how this guy was a, turned into a crazy person who all of a certain all of a sudden started talking about Islam and all how great it was. Maybe isn't that you know? Don't we want to talk about that a little bit? But no, we can't because the major the the vast majority the peaceful Muslims will get upset. Oh, you're stereotyping us. No. We're telling people, hey, everybody, if there's a crazy person saying crazy Islamic things around you, maybe keep an eye on that guy. Because this guy, when he got fired, went on a rampage beheading people. Ah, oh, but uh, Islam, uh, religion, didn't, religion didn't play a role. Really? Because it, like, it seems like you are just summarily di- dismissing that possibility without without accounting for anything that that's observed the whole i don't know condemning masturbation because of is because islam says so condemning the west for not helping palestinians during the recent conflict with the israelis which i actually kind of agree with but and then and then when he goes crazy he beheads somebody just like other radical islamists is if it, i you got you do this over here, go, oh, that's radical Islam. But then you do it over here, oh, well, you know, we don't we don't know. And it's possible the guy just had a crazy dissociative event. He just went crazy. He just went bleh, crazy. It's totally possible. But I want to hear about, I want to hear more about why definitively it isn't his crazy religious views before I hear about, well, he just went crazy and decided to behead somebody because he lost his job. One doesn't mesh up with the other. Islam seems to come around, introduce into his life, and he goes crazy. Speaking of religious religion making people do crazy things, let me rap with you about the Pope for a bit. Just a little bit. Scoozy. Scoozy. The Pope. Ah, uh, the Pope. Uh... This is from NBC News. Vatican's have arrested ex-Archbishop Joseph Wesolowski on pedophilia charges. Okay, the Vatican has arrested an ex-Archbishop for pedophilia charges. Arrested him. We're going to put him on whatever, whatever their judicial system is. Okay. Good, right? Yeah, Pope cracking down, finally. Finally cracking down on pedophilia. Right? <laughs> right? Well, here's the hist- history of Mr. Wesolowski. The Vatican on Tuesday, uh, this is from NBC News. The Vatican on Tuesday arrested a former archbishop accused of paying for sex with children 
while he was a Papal ambassador in the Dominican Republic, the first ever arrest inside the city-state on charges of pedophilia. Joseph Wesolowski, a Pole who was defrocked by a Vatican tribunal in June, has been placed under house arrest awaiting a criminal trial, the Vatican said in a statement. The 66-year-old Wesolowski is the most prominent church figure to be arrested since Paolo Gabriel, a former Papal butler convicted in 2012 of stealing and leaking private papers of former Pope Benedict the, uh, the 16th. Unlike Gra Gabriel, Wesolowski has not been detained in the Vatican prison, a couple of rooms attached to a courthouse, but was granted house arrest in a Vatican apartment for medical reasons. Wesolowski was recalled to Rome by the Vatican last year when he was still a diplomat in Santo Domingo and relieved of his duties after Dominican media accused him of pedophilia. He had been living freely in Rome, and victims of sexual abuse had called for his arrest, expressing concern he might flee. The former Archbishop, Archbishop could face up to 12 years in jail in what will be the first trial for sexual abuse to be held inside the Vatican City. Well, better late than never, right? In 2013, keep in mind, keep in mind, Pope Francis was installed early last year in 2013. This guy was removed, was relieved of his duties and brought back to the Vatican after Dominican media accused him of pedophilia last year. They brought him, they, they relieved him of duties and brought him back last year, 2013. More than a year. He was relieved, he was defrocked in June. Finally defrocked in June of this year. Last year, relieved of his duties, brought back after the Dominican media said, hey, he's diddling kids. And he's been living freely in Rome ever since. Now, throughout that entire time, Pope Francis has been able to drop the dime on the guy. But now, September 29th, 2014, after the guy was accused last year by the Dominicans and relieved of his duties and brought back to Rome, only defrocked in June, and now finally arrested. Screw you, Pope. Bitch. It's, this is nothing. This is, oh, well, I guess we better do something. Because... We relieved him of his duties last year and didn't do anything, anything in that time. He was just living freely in, oh, scoot, in, in, in Rome, living or walking around in Rome. Just walking around, oh, scoozy, ha, ha, how's it going? Or he's a Pollock, so he's probably running into things. He's like, oh, my God. Oh, I just ran into this kid's butt. Oops, oh, my goodness. Living freely in Rome since last year when he was relieved of his duties. Only, only defrocked in June of this year, and now only arrested September 29th. This Pope's, this Pope's nothing. It, it, it's, it's business as usual. That's all it is. Go ahead and diddle more kids. There's another Pope uh, or a, 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 another priest who, who had thousands upon thousands of child porn images on a hard drive in the church. In the church. They had a computer with kitty porn on it. Finally arrested. Oh, well. Uh, uh, scoozy. That's what they got. They got nothing for you. If oh, this, Hey, this guy's, it's business as usual again. Because the, the, the modus operandi would be accusations of sexual misconduct, sexual assault against children. And then you just shuffle them around. You just relieve them of their duties. Bring them back. That's all. Just relieve them of their duties. Bring them back. And then we'll just we'll all pretend it didn't go away. In 2013, Joseph Wesolowski or Joseph Wesolowski was accused by the Dominicans of diddling kids. And what did the what what did Pope Francis Scusi? What did he do? Oh, he just pulled him back. Oh, just come on back here. Not arrested. Not charged. Not under supervision. Living freely in Rome. And only, and only when the voices got too loud, when the voices of the people in Rome who said, hey, this guy, this guy was diddling kids in Santo Domingo, and all you did was bring him back, and now he's just walking around Rome. What the hell are you doing? Only, now, only then was he defrocked 
still living and now still living freely and now he's arrested. This pope's a bitch. This pope's nothing. Good, get him out of here. I, when's he going to die? Get us the next one. And maybe, 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 finally, someday, somebody will go, you know, the church hasn't really done much. I mean, they paid out a lot of money. Oh, they paid out a lot of money. Oh, it's good. All from, all from well-meaning people believing in God. Where, where, do you think the, where do you think the church gets a lot of its money, huh? Hmm? Take a lot of donations, don't they? You think, any, you think any bit of that money is gone to pay victims, hush money, victims of sexual, child sexual assault? Do you think any? Oh, yeah. Scoozy. Oh, believe in God, Jesus, the Lord, our God, the, the Alpha Omega. Oh, yeah. Oh, we're just, we're still moving. Just move them around. Oh, what did you, oh, you're accusing them of diddling kids? Come on back here to Rome, big stroker. Go ahead and live in your apartment, walk around the streets of Rome. Yeah, the Dominicans are saying you, you, uh, you were diddling kids, but no, no, no. Just come on, just live in Rome. That's all you got to do. Oh, what's that? Oh, the people of Rome are pissed. No, I'm sorry, Joseph. We have to investigate. Oh, we defrocked you. Ooh, okay, maybe that'll be enough. Oh, no, they're still pissed off. All right, I guess we got to arrest you. This Pope's a bitch. Organized religion is a black mark, a scourge on society. Let's bring it home. Another great lefty, sh lefty show. I thank you all for joining. I had a great time putting on the show for you. I hope you had a great time listening. Thank you to everybody for watching, liking, favoriting, subscribing on YouTube. YouTube.com slash LeftyOX is where you can go to find the show in its YouTube formation. Thank you to everybody that's been sharing the show with friends, family, and coworkers. It helps the show grow. Try it out for yourself wherever you down or wherever you get your podcasts for your PC, mobile device, or tablet, Android, iOS, it doesn't matter. Be sure to uh, search The Lefty Show. Subscribe to the RSS feed there. Download all the episodes at your leisure. Thank you to everybody that's been following me on Twitter at Lefty643. Stay up to date on all the latest and greatest Lefty Show news. And thank you to everybody that has been donating. I'm raising.com forward slash 643 productions is where you can do that. Anyway, guys, that's my time. I got to get out of here. Thank you for joining. I hope you enjoyed. Happy Monday. I'll catch you next time. I'm out. Bye. Scusi.